Hello and welcome again to the Hobo's Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom, and we're going to talk a little bit of wrestling. Again, this is Thanksgiving week, so I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, uh, which reminds me, a moment. Told my girlfriend how to wear this, therefore it shall be worn. If that doesn't belong on there. Yeah, so um, this is Turkey Tom. You are watching the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show here on YouTube. Where did I put my note? Darn it. We have some wrestling notes going on um, in the background. Daniel and Brian is coming out to some yes chance to, to his yes stuff. So I can hear it in the back background because I am making my NXT War Games video first. And a couple things. Where did I put my little notes thing? Darn it. Um, this, uh, just a couple notes. Probably in three weeks, I have a major announcement about some programming changes. Um, also, probably on Wednesday night, Thursday, going to give you my own version of Survivor Series. If I could find my notes, where did I put that stuff? Oh, there it is. So again, I'll talk about this kind of first, because this is going to be a fairly short video. Um, but for what I'm doing, I'm going to have... So for the first match, it's going to be the five faces of Tom versus the multiple faces of Sting and Undertaker. And the second match, it's going to be the four faces of Heather versus the four horsewomen. So that should be interesting. Then we have, I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. We have all the south of the border wrestlers in 2K17, including the Cuban connection, the Cuba connection, versus what I just thought was the Gringos, which is a bunch of American tag team wrestlers. It's not original, but hey. Then we have the Keller Boys versus Taj and a mystery partner. And then, again, because I haven't had this. Wow, look at that. El Vagabundo Dos Hobo is going to defend his belt against Diamondback Jack Maverick. We'll see what happens at the end of that. But let's talk about some NXT War Games, because that's the first thing that happened. Um, that was on Saturday night. I know this video is getting up kind of late. I figured, since I've been doing it in the past, I've been putting up two videos. So I have one longer video versus two short ones. Yeah, you can like, share, comment, and even send an email and say, we like the longer videos, or say, no, we like the shorter videos. It's all up to you guys. I think we're going to kind of mix and match stuff. Again, big programming announcement in three weeks. Um, so let's talk about War Games for sure. Also, you can always subscribe. And therefore, you will know if it's going to be a short show or a long show. And I do apologize. I just realized I got copyright infringements for Lucha Underground. So I think you can't view them if you're in certain countries. It's weird because it's not across the board. And if I have to stop, that's okay because I am trying to watch Survivor Series because it's a final match. Daniel and Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. It should be like a ten, five minute squash match. Let's talk about NXT War Games. Instead, again, I do have on my NXT guard my DIY shirt. You might see heel DIY coming up, but I'll save that for later. So the first match of the night was actually a kind of dark match. It was Matt Riddle versus Kai Sono. And this is a spoiler for those. I think they're going to show this on NXT. This was a ham sandwich, though. The only reason I say it's a ham sandwich match, even though it is Kaius Ono and, and Matt Riddle, it only took like three minutes. So it's like a squash match. 
Like, welcome to NXT, Matt Riddle. Here, you can go squash Kaya Sona, who should be, who should have a half-hour match against at least. So when we get to NXT proper, the first match is Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. Again, so you have two submission wrestlers, which is pretty good. You have two wrestlers who can who not only know submissions, but are also pretty good strikers. And of course, with this stipulation, it was a two out of three fall situation. And it was it was pretty good. Um Shayna gets the first pinfall. And then all of a sudden they get back to their feet, referee restarts it, and it's a slugfest. And then, oh my gosh, did Kyrie Sane ever hit a spike DDT on Shane, Shayna Baszler on the apron? Shayna literally went vertical, their head striking the hardest part of the ring. And then... I mean, Kyrie Sane was just, like, standing. She just, like, went to the floor. That was awesome. So then Kyrie Sane, again, hit an elbow after that. Got the pinfall, so now it's tied one. One. And then for the third part, this is where it got kind of, kind of schmozzy because uh, Shapira and Duke started to get involved. Um, uh, and then of course with that Dakota Kai comes out and Io Shirai eventually comes out Io Shirai hit an amazing moonsault from the top to the bottom but it was it was okay um, there was a power bomb from the top rope but overall Shannon Baszler pick up the third pin Shannon Baszler wins she's the new NXT Women's Champion I think this was the kind of sleeper match of the night. The match you could kind of snooze through. So this was a cheeseburger match. I mean, it was good. It could have been so much better. And when you take a look at other two out of three falls matches, especially involving the women, they've all been better. Uh, it is what it was. Then the the second official match, you had Alexander Black versus Johnny Gargano. This is really good because now you have a, a true clash of styles. You have a striker in Alexander Black and the wrestler in Johnny Gargano. Of course, it's Johnny Wrestling. Well, could it be evil Johnny Wrestling? Evil Johnny Gargano. And, of course, a heel DIY team where this shirt would just be black and red instead of blue and white. It was really good stuff from both. Um, again, those people in NXT really work on those DDTs. Nasty DDT. And Gargano? I think he's turning to the dark side, which is good. Um, black, again, he can no-sell and eventually just... Just just pointing, hit me again, and then does those little sit down cross legged sit down, and just says hit me. Of course, Johnny Argo did hit him. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> I mean, then there was some quick pins. It was, but it was finished up when Alexander Black hit two black masks on Johnny Gargano. So this was a really fun match. Big thing about this is that there were some good back and forth moments. Again, Johnny Gargano teased that evil streak. So that gave a little bit more character. This was a surf and turf match. And the third official match was the psycho killer Tommaso Bumaye Ciampa versus the Velveteen Dream. Whoever puts the Velveteen's wardrobe together should be promoted because the Dream in 
every NXT TakeOver event has always looked amazing. Now this time, Gene goes NWO Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The black and white NWO shirt with a white feather boa. And I like the way it really started off. I mean, the fact that they started off really by staring at each other, then went straight to a classic collar and elbow tie-up. Classic wrestling. And especially from this match, it was really good. Ooh, something's happening in this match. Oh, no. That's okay. But, um, again, you do not slap a psycho killer in the head. Oh, and don't touch another man's headband. And never, ever take another man's belt. I mean, the dream is just amazing. He, he can sell. I mean, a couple times, it looked like he was out cold. Um, Ciampa, again, he can also sell. And for some reason, he starts to take off his shoe. I hope he's. I hope he didn't re-injure that knee. I'm trying to think, when I banged up my knee, my feet were fine. But you never know, because again, they wear those funky boots. But again, the thing is, I think my only thing is that I hope they're not making the dream to be the NXT's version of Jay Lethal. Whereas Jay Lethal gets tapped on the shoulder and he becomes a macho man, yeah! Because you don't know what's going to happen. He could shake your hand. Yeah! Or smack you in the face. Yeah! Macho man still the best. And then, again, the dream. The only reason I said this is because he had the big boot from Hulk Hogan. With the leg drop, went for a pinfall. Um... I think someone either bit their lip or got a busted lip, because then you see the ref wearing the, the traditional, well, I guess the black gloves. You know, the, the black black latex gloves. I think someone like just like busted their lip or something. Because I thought I saw just a little trickle of blood, but wasn't sure. It, it, it wasn't like, like just a whole bloody crimson mass. This, this was more like, like a busted lip or something. Or, or they went against, like, a ring post the wrong way. Sometimes that happens. Where it's like a, a weird cut. I think um, Chris Jericho slapped someone. And he was wearing a bracelet, and the bracelet kind of, like, cut him on the cheek. So it was kind of that weird thing. Um, again, they had the figure from the ring post. This match at all had submissions. I mean, I wanted to see if Ciampa was going to pull a weapon out of his shoe. That would have been cool. But he did bring the belt in. The um, Dream inadvertently DDT'd Ciampa on the belt. It's like, not my fault. Well, the referee allowed it, though. But again, um, Morrow said something to, to Ciampa, and Ciampa was going after Morrow. That looks semi shootish. So. We'll see what happens there. But again, Tommaso Ciampa hit his finisher on the dream. Ciampa retains. And this match was so good. It really had everything. This was a filet mignon match. And the final match was the War Games match. This was the Undisputed Era oh, of Adam Cole, baby! Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong, who we haven't seen in a while, versus War Raiders, Pete Dunne, and Ricochet. And this just really seemed like a big eight-man tornado tag team match. Let the war games begin! I mean, for some reason, I just remember War Games having more teams involved. That just might be me, though. Um, again, so the first one, uh, rules are simple. It's one-on-one -on -one for five minutes, and then they send someone else in. Then three minutes, they just kind of alternate. So it goes one-on-one, two-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-two, three-on-three, four-on-three, four-on-four. So it starts off with... Adam Cole, baby! 
and King Ricochet, which he should always be called. And the two of them start in different rings. They're like, they get into my ring. Ricochet is still the best, though. I don't care what anyone else says. Um, it was a really fun match. Uh, Kyle Riley's the next one, so now it's two on one for three minutes. Again, they just kind of really just beat on Ricochet. Then Hanson of War Machines comes in, so now it's two on two. Um, Roderick Strong, he gives out some amazing backbreakers. He is the master of the backbreaker. Then you had Roe come in, and then Bobby Fish, so now it's four on three. The Undisputed Era is smart, though. They padlock Page holding Pete Dunn. So it takes him a good while to get in, and then eventually Pete Dunn goes, does get in. Um, the crowd is chanting something. I just I couldn't figure out what, what they were chanting. I mean, Adam Cole is so good. I mean, while, while mocking Pete Dunn, oh, Adam Cole is so good. Adam Cole, baby! It's so good. I'm sorry. I forgot that. Um, they, oh, and they bust out the kendo sticks or tables in the wall. <laughs> it's also a very poorly made table. Couldn't stand up. Um, there was no please don't die chant. They weren't as extreme. Although they did do like a super tower of doom from like a bunch of, um, I forget who it was, was on the top. And then there were people on the beneath them, standing on the second rope. And then there was a the guy, and then there was Row underneath him on the ring. So it was really big. It was like a super Tower of Doom thing. And then it became Cirque Cir Ricochet. He did a reverse. He did a, well, I don't know what you call it. It's either an 0720 or a 720 moonsault because he did two full rotations from the top and a moonsault, and that's why he is King Ricochet. Um, eventually, Pete Dunn did hit his finisher. I forget what it's called, and Ricochet also hit his at the same time, simultaneous. It was pretty good. It was very cool. Um, also, the War Raiders started to use Ricochet as a weapon. I think at one time they used him and threw him into the other ring to break up the pinfall attempt. It's always fun when, when people get used as weapons. That's some good stuff. But this was a really fun match. Um, again, King, King Ricochet and Pete Dunn pick up the pin, and therefore they pick up a win. And really... It was really slow to begin with, but once Ricochet started getting that groove, I and mean, once you see that, that 720 moonsault, you have a surf and turf match. Oh, man. Dude. Brock kicks out of a running knee. But that will be in my next show. So again, um, based on my predictions, my girlfriend's predictions, I think that's there at the very top, bottom part, I guess. We are 50-50 bookers. And that was NXT War Games. Um, after this little break, you'll see my review on Survivor Series. I'll see everyone shortly. Bye. Okay, so let's see here. Rock one. Technically wrong. One, two.
three. Four. So I got four. Out of eight. Oh, wait a second. I'm recording. Hello, and welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. Excuse me for one moment. I promised someone I'd do this. Welcome to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I guess for today, I am Turkey Tom. Um, my girlfriend is kind of doing stuff with her whole family. Because I had to work. And next week I have to work. And in three weeks, Trace, there's a big announcement about some programming changes coming here to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. Um, just like I stated before, I am doing my little Thanksgiving Survivor Series special. You can kind of rewind just to see that. But now that Survivor Series is over, let's talk about Survivor Series. I remember the very first Survivor Series where they had the Gobbly Gooker. I'm pointing to this. There we go. And that was kind of neat. And ever since then, it's been a kind of a staple around Thanksgiving. Let's go right into the details. Again, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing. You can leave a comment, or you can be like Nostrum, who's going to get this OMG moment. And also leave an email. And thank you very much, Nostrum. Um, the email he sent me is that he listed off all the people's names that I did not get last time because the audio was pretty good. And when you hear people shouting things in the in your ear, you're trying to listen to the announcer. It's hard to get names, especially if they're really the developmental talent, and you're like, "Who's that?" And the announcer goes, oh, 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 oh. "It's like, oh, okay, you got to work on on your mic alliteration." Also, the acoustics of the building are pretty good, but they're not the best. Not like a true arena. So, with all that said and done, let's talk about some Survivor Series. And Survivor Series actually started off with a two-hour-long pre-show. Oh, wow, this is long. And Nia Jax, I can't believe you you went there. But it's like, yeah, look at what I did to Becky's face. Punch in the face, shoot style. And the Raw women started to fight amongst themselves. It was the Riot Squad versus Natalia. So Alexa Bliss says, you four, out! And then promotes Sasha Banks and Bailey to the team. And that kind of sealed... Fates, as far as I, I was concerned. Uh, Mandy Rose, then again, was a surprise entrant because Charlotte wasn't going to enter in. And she was on Team SmackDown. And then our, our truth keeps on showing up. Our truth is a little goofy. I'm hitting that, that secret sauce even more than I have. You know, in the few days, on myself an adult beverage on a Sunday, it's for wrestling. Sometimes you need, sometimes you need it, especially with the WWE. But about the pre-show, God, that two hours is long. This show ended at ten thirty, started at five. That's not too bad. Five and a half hours of wrestling. You know, so if you were there, you'd have. To Sit in a chair for about five hours. We don't have an intermission. But geez, at five o'clock when they had the pre show, that stadium looked empty. It didn't look much. It started to fill up for the tag team match, which is next. <laughs> what did they do? Just something. I can't even read my handwriting some days. But 
the t- we have the tag team survivor um, of Raw versus SmackDown. It was pretty good. Um, let me go through first the order, and then talk about some of the so, some of the highlights. So the first team only el- eliminated was Sanity, and that was done by actually a really great double team by Rude and Gable. It was just like a neck breaker splash, which is really good looking. Then, of course, if someone from SmackDown got eliminated, the next team, you know, was going to be a Raw team. And the Ascension got eliminated. And the club was next, the Lucha House Party. And the Lucha House Party's funny. <laughs> hey, hey, who's supposed to be in? There's just like mad tagging. Lucha Party's so good. Then uh, Rude and Gable got eliminated. And then a Shatter Machine by the Revival eliminated the New Day. And then so that left the Revival, which was good to see, versus the Usos. And this was a really fun opening event. Um, The tag teams, for the most part, kind of showed at least their personality. That's their whole moveset. I think it was only... 20 minutes, half hour long at most. The The one good thing that Survivor Series said, they did kind of give like the truncated entrance. Like I know for the World Cup Series, they only allowed two minutes, I think, for a nation's national anthem. I think there's like one national anthem. I want to say it's from South America. I want to say it's the Argentinian national anthem lasts like 15 minutes or so. They have like five verses. I like our national anthem. That's like one verse. Most national anthems, especially if they're fairly modern, I think the more modern you get, the more verses you have. The older it is, the simpler it is. God save the queen. And then it doesn't go on much longer than that. Soviet Union saw one of the best sounding national anthems. Next to the German national anthem. The way I would rate national anthems, USA, Germany, or I'd have to say the Soviet Union. That's it. Done. Very short list. But yeah, this was a fun match. Um, I mean, the only thing I can say about it is that it seemed botchy. The Lucha House Party, they, they tried to do like a DDT or something, and like he went like right against the ropes. Or no, it was he was trying to hurricane him outside, like over the ropes. And I think it was Scott Dawson. Was it Dash Wilder? Whichever one the, the, the bald guy is. Again, the good thing about wearing this is that it looks like I have more hair than I do. <laughs> but he just went like flat into the ropes. Um, even was a move hit by the Revival onto the New Day. Even that seemed kind of botchy. This was a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. And then the second match was the Women's Raw versus the Women's SmackDown. And the Women's Raw, you have Sasha, Bailey, Nia, Nia Jax, Mickey James, and Tamina versus Mandy Rose, Boo, Sonya Deville. That just comes out automatically now. Asuka, Naomi, and Carmella. Um... It was fun. I mean, it kind of started off as, as chaos. It was a big brawl. Okay, going in the order of elimination. Naomi was eliminated first. Then Tamina and Mickey James and Carmella. Then Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Bailey, Sasha. And finally, 
Asuka was eliminated. So it was a fun match. I mean, Carmella's busting out more moves. She was really the standout of the match. Um, it was really good. Uh, well, <laughs> until Sasha and Bailey kind of got in, got involved, and then Bailey hit the the Bailey to belly. I think it was. I just don't get it. Nia Jax does not heal, heal it up because she did have Sasha out of the ring. Um, Oscar, Oscar kicked Nia's head off. Ooh, that looked brutal. And the crowd was chanting Oscar, and then started to chant, "You deserve it." And Nia Jax got kicked in the head. Then it was eventually um, there was a double count out with Sasha and. No, with Bailey and Sonya Deville. Then it was Sasha and Nia Jax. Asuka. Nia Jax pushes Sasha Banks off. She gets counted out, and because uh, Sasha went up to the top rope, Nia Jax just pushed her off. Got, so Sasha got counted out. Nia Jax just destroyed Asuka. Why Asuka WWE? So Nia Jax wins, and she gets the 30th spot in the Women's Royal Rumble come January? Or is it February? No, I think it's January. I'll be live streaming that because my current live stream suspension is up in wow, about 45 days. December 31st, I get to live stream again. Woohoo! And this was, a, this was a fun match. So it's hard to complain about it. This was a good cheeseburger match. In the next match, we have Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I think the crowd started to get kind of restless because I know before this they had a Strowman promo in the back. He's just there addressing Team Raw. It's like, who are you? You, you, you deserve to be here. You can get more hands. It's kind of setting up for, for uh, Drew and Braun. But then here with the match, we have Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, it was fun stuff. Nothing super, though. It just seemed like a good Raw match. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura has better striking skills than Seth Rollins does. Seth is just like the Energizer Bunny in the ring. He just he gets going and he doesn't stop, which is good and entertaining to some degree, except for there's no way Seth should ever win this match by outstriking Shinsuke. Um, the good news is I did give it about 20 minutes. There was nothing new. It was just like a match. It's like, yeah, you two fight against each other. So, I hate to say it, but this is really a ham sandwich match. And then the, the other backstage part where Arthur shows up and wants to be on the, the Raw. Survivor team. Our truth. You're not even on Raw. Again, yeah. it's been hitting too much of those adult beverages. It's confused. And then probably another. This was a weird card. It started off good. Dip down. And then we'll see what happens. Um, then, so yeah, the bar versus Authors of Pain. I mean, the bar is so good, they were actually carrying this match. But then the Authors of Pain won. The only thing I can say is that at least the Authors of Pain didn't look like Ninja Turtles this time. I mean, there's nothing spectacular. The Big Show did go after Rockstar Spud. I always forget his WWE name. Darn. 
And it was okay. I mean, I think this was like the shortest match on the card. I mean, it was a ham sandwich match. Then you have R Truth goes back to SmackDown and says, Man, I want to be on this team. And they're staring at him. Like, what are you doing? It's like, Well, I'm just glad I'm not on Raw. They're like, No, really. It's like, You're always on SmackDown. It was weird. And then we had really the match of the night. Um, even though I enjoyed the one match, this. This was probably the best pure wrestling match of the night. So, oh wow. Where did I do this? This was Buddy Murphy versus Mustafa Ali. I mean, when I was watching this, I'm thinking like, dude, this might be the match of the night. The screwdriver weights are fun to watch. They have the pacing done. You had old school moves like the Frankensteiner. A lot of stuff outside the ring. Ali is amazing. He might have the second best DDT that I've seen so far. Or might it be the third best? Ciampa has a really good I mean, just a great pace. I mean, Ali pulls out all, this, all the stunts. Murphy's a smart wrestler, though. He's wrestled Ali before, and he knows all his tricks and tactics, which is smart. He, it's like he watches film on his opponents, which is what you're kind of supposed to do. I mean, you're like a pump handle driver. Oh, uh, uh, Mustafa Ali got on the top before that, and he just pulled him by the hair down. Good, dirty tactics. I like heels that use heel tactics. Buddy Murphy, you get a thumbs up from me. And Buddy Murphy won. This was a, such a fun match, and the cruiserweights deserve a lot more respect to get. Therefore, I am going to give this match a filet mignon rating. Or in the spirit of Thanksgiving, it's going to be a turkey dinner with all the fixings. Then the next match is that you have the Raw versus SmackDown Survivor Series match. And you, so you have on the Raw side, you have Bobby Lashley, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Finn Balor, and Drew McIntyre versus The Miz, Shane, Rey Mysterio, Samoa Joe, and Jeff Hardy. Again, let's get to the order of elimination first. Samoa so Joe was eliminated first. I guess he didn't want to be there. Then it was Finn Balor, Dolph Ziggler, Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, The Miz. Finally, Shane McMahon. He got his comeuppance. Um, it was really fun. Um, I think this is going to set up, because there was no clear one person who stood tall. There were three people. I mean, I think it's, so this is going to lead to a Lashley, Braun, Drew three-way match for either the title of TLC or they're going to have a three-way challenge. Or they could do, and WWE, send me a shiny nickel for this idea. You have them in a three-way elimination. Whoever loses first has to go number one. Whoever, so whoever gets eliminated first has to be number one. Whoever gets eliminated, eliminated second gets to go number 15. And whoever wins the whole thing gets to go in at 30. That's a good idea if I ever heard it. Again, one shiny nickel or just take away my, my, my live stream suspension. But this was really fun, though. I mean, there was a quick elimination with a Claymore kick, kick on Joe. I mean, Dolph has skills. He was just talking trash the whole time. He's good. However, again, they did tease, and this is why I enjoyed this. Because you knew Drew and Braun did not like each other, and they showed that. So they so they were fighting amongst themselves. But then, why did SmackDown try and break them up? Let them fight. Let them beat each other up. Still, they should do that. I mean, that, 
But then again, you have Shane doing the coast to coast so often. I mean, Jeff Hardy's still the man. He did take the uh, uh, the, the feet after he tried a swanton bomb. I mean, this has been the most fun Survivor match I've actually seen in a while. Again, Braun's so strong, he got out, he kicked out of a coast-to-coast. -coast. Miz is terrific. When it was Miz and Shane, and it was um, Braun, Lashley, and Drew, he looked absolutely terrified. I mean, it was really fun. And this actually got the crowd into it. And at the end of the match, then when Braun did and Shane, um, Baron Corbin just gets in and, and sucker punches Braun and then runs away. I mean, there were a whole lot of chants. There was a delete chance. Uh, you deserve it. And it was just really fun. We're going to take a little short break because this was very long. And after that little break, I think the story of the night, though, really was that Enzo Amore showed up to the Survivor Series and got kicked out of the Survivor Series. Um, I know there's a whole bunch of YouTube clips. I can't show those because I don't want to attempt another Survivor. I don't. I don't want to attempt another uh, live stream violation. But he was literally like, he, he printed that into he had a mic in his hand. My name is Enzo Amore. And I'm a bona fide G and a certified stud, and you can't teach that. And the whole crowd was behind him stuff, and security's like, eh, eh, not happening. He just got kicked out. Which was weird, because he bought a ticket, I guess. Because he was just sitting down there for a while, and then all of a sudden, at the boot, he is persona non grata in the WWE. But overall, getting back to the real story, the men's SmackDown event, because it was so much fun, it was so enjoyable, put a smile on my face. I don't think I've ever done this, but this is going to get a filet mignon rank. Again, this would be like having a turkey di dinner with all the trimmings, the cranberry, the cranberry roll, the stuffing, potatoes, green bean casserole, and it includes some pecan pie or your choice of three pies. Ooh, pecan pie, apple pie, and pumpkin pie. Again, leave a comment. Which is your favorite pie for Thanksgiving? Mine's still a pecan pie. Again, it's one of those things that I had. First time I came to the South. So good. And then we get to the women's against each other. So it's Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. And before that, um, they announced that TLC is going to be Seth versus Dean for the Intercontinental Championship, whatever. Um, for the most part, there were 50-50 chance. Let's go, Charlotte. Let's go, Ronda. But let's go Ronda, let's go Charlotte. Whichever order they did it in. And there were some quick pen attempts. And, and it looks like Ronda got tagged with an elbow on the cheek or something. Because she was pretty bloody. I don't know if it was her cheek. Or if her... I know her ear got busted. Because I know she had cauliflower ear from her MMA, from her MMA days. But it looked like her cheek got busted open. It looked like it was like, like by an elbow or something. Hey, she took it like a pro, and at least she didn't pull a Brock Lesnar. Because and, 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 if, she sh if she shot on Charlotte Flair, oh, oh, I almost don't want to see that. Oh, and by the way, about shooting, Rhonda, you have to get some better bottoms. Because when Charlotte Flair wins going for a Boston Crab, Oh, yeah, Rhonda. You have to get some bigger bottoms there. Bigger bottoms, baby! 
she almost showed the world what makes Rhonda Rhonda. So bad am I. So to that, I'm gonna show a quick video. Have a quick little clip. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, really, it was a pretty good match. I mean, Ronda's really learned how to kick out, especially at, at, at that near three, near three fall. She can also take a chop. She was, she was actually getting beat up pretty good. Um, she would go for the arm bar several times. Charlotte, again, being that smart wrestler, it looks like she watched tape. She's like, I'm no dummy. I've seen you use the arm bar. It's your best move. You're not getting no arm bar on me. But it was a death to finish, baby. That means, well, in the WWE, Ronda Rousey wins. Because then a death to finish, baby, nobody wins. Because Charlotte found a kendo stick. Who knew wrestlers were so fond of their kendo sticks? And just started to beat Ronda Rousey with it. Ref said, you can't do that. Ring the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Ronda Rousey wins because of a death to finish, baby. Charlotte got DQ'd, baby. And then she, she started to beat the refs up with it. Then she got a steel chair. Started to beat Ronda with a steel chair. Started to beat the refs with a steel chair. So we have heel Charlotte, and this is probably the first time that Ronda Rousey's really been booed, and the crowd hasn't been with her because they were chanting, thank you, Charlotte. So it was really interesting to see. Maybe we're going to have a heel and evil Becky, evil Charlotte together. Woo! That gives me goosebumps, or, or, or in this case, Turkey bumps. <laughs> then the final match of the evening, the main event. Oh, and that and that uh, event. Um, and and we could debate this forever. People said, "Oh, it was so good. The ending was so great." But I think it was enough to finish. Nobody win. Then advance much. I don't know. The wrestling was okay. <sighs> to me, this just seemed like a cheeseburger match. That's the old phrase. Looks like a turkey. And gobbles like a turkey. Guess what you found? A turkey. So I'm gonna say it's a cheeseburger match. Again, you can you can leave a comment saying you don't know what you're talking about, you stupid obo. Go back out on those streets and get more aluminum cans. What I'm to do next once I start processing videos. But then this leads to the main event of the evening, um, the WWE Champion versus the Universal Champion, Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. And this is a kind of typical start where Brock just started hitting German suplex. Really carefully against Daniel Bryan. It's kind of that weird slow start. And Daniel Bryan just, I don't know how the ref didn't see it. But, but he just he just kicked him. Down there. Men, you know what I'm talking about. Down there. And then he went for the running knee. But Brock is being the beast he is. He kicked out of that. Um, second time he tried, and then Daniel Bryan just started to stomp on his head. That was pretty vicious. Um, he went for another knee, and that was caught by Lesnar. And I don't know why he did this, but he copied his wife's move, and then he botched some suicide dive. A la Reed Danielson?
And Lesnar, again, still the beast. He went for a second suicide dive. Yeah, not the smartest thing to do. Because then he got caught him, slammed into the ring post. Then they just started trading kicks. Um, eventually, he got brought down to one knee. He had him in the yes lock for a while. Um, so he kicked out of the second knee, did not submit to the yes lock, and eventually Brock put, had him out in like a power bomb F5, it seemed. And the F5 is the most powerful finisher in WWE. And for the most part, it was a, it was a fun match. It was, it was a good match. So therefore, it gets a cheeseburger. And that was the Survivor Series. It was good. Um, I'm glad it didn't last until 11. You know, this video says it's now at 11.06. But my fear was it was going to be like eight hours. Eight hours long. That's long. That's like a WrestleMania nine hours. Jeez, I'm not looking forward to covering WrestleMania. Nine hours of wrestling. Even I have to use the bathroom sometimes. But that was it. So that was the joint show of the NXT TakeOver. Los Angeles, I guess. And the WWE Survivor Series. So again, on I think next week I'm going to go to the one video a day. Monday night I'll put up my Raw Reactions. You'll definitely be able to see those Tuesday morning. Tuesday will be the Smack Mix Max Challenge. And then Wednesday night, Thursday-ish, will be my Thanksgiving special. And I think I might start doing Impact stuff again. Because Lucha Underground's over. But we'll see what happens. And then the following week, major announcement coming. Some programming changes to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. Stay tuned. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'd like to thank everyone for their support. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Oh, and everyone have a happy Thanksgiving, in case I don't say so. Yeah.